Today we're going to have a look at how you can make a speedo on a Unity UI. You're going to need two graphics for this, one the back of your speedo and the other your needle. I got mine off this site, as you can see. If you search for free assets for speedos, there are lots and lots of them out there. So once you've imported your sprites into Unity, you're going to need to turn them into sprites. One thing to remember about your needle is you want the center of your needle to be right in the center of your image because you're gonna rotate your image around to move the needle. So if your needle isn't in the center, it won't rotate correctly. So I'm gonna do what I usually do a lot of times and I'm going to go to my main camera. I'm gonna turn it to a solid color. This time it's gonna make it black. I'm going to go up to game objects. I'm going to add a canvas. I'm going to turn the canvas to camera, drop the main camera in there, and I'm going to turn my distance to one. I'm going to click here on my canvas. I'm going to frame it up. I'm going to look at it from the back because that's the way the camera's looking at it. And I'll make my gizmo for gizmos a little bit smaller. Then I'm going to add a UI image. This is going to be the image for the back of the speedo. You'll notice when I name things, I often leave the original name at the start. That's so that I can quickly, when I'm looking at things, go, oh, that's an image or that's a button. And then I can tell what type of button or image it is. Now I'm going to then drop my speedo back into the sprite. You could click preserve aspect if you wanted, or you just need to make sure that you keep your image square. So I'm going to hold down the shift while making this larger. And I might just pull it to the left of the screen. Next up, I'm going to create another 3D ob um, The next up, I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to rename it the needle. And I'm going to drop my needle graphic in here. I'm going to need one more piece of UI, and that's just going to be a slider. You don't actually necessarily need this slider if you're making one for your game. I'm going to use the slider as a way to demonstrate how the speed actually changes and works. So I'm going to leave my min, min value at zero and turn my maximum value to 210. And now as I change this, you can see I can get a value between zero and 210, which will be really useful for testing. Now, when you have a look at the needle, you'll see that Z equals zero has my wow, needle pointing upwards at 100. If you want to make your life easy, you could make your image and save it so that the needle is pointing in the direction of zero, but most of the assets you're going to get are going to have your needle pointing directly upwards. So now if I rotate this in the Z, you'll notice that around 120 degrees on my Z here gives me zero and minus 120 will give me 210. That's important to note for when we write the script and that's the scale that we're gonna be working on. So let's turn that back to zero. And now let's create a script to make this all work. I'm going to put this into a scripts folder. And double click your script. Because we're using images as this part of Unity UI, we'll need to add the UI library. 
Next up, we're going to need references to two things. We're going to need a reference to the image that we created so of the needle so that we can move it. And I'm going to also want a reference to the slider because as we move the slider left and right, we're going to be want to read in those values. Next up, we'll need some variables for actually controlling the speed. What we'll need is the current speed of the, that you're going, the target speed that we're aiming for, and how fast we should move the needle to that speed. Now, the reason I'm doing it this way is if you just all of a sudden jerk and change from 0 to 60, it's not going to look very good graphically. So I'm going to animate it so that you always get a smooth transition. You can change the speed of this to make it as fast or as slow as you want, but I like it and it looks better. If you don't want to do this, you can literally just change the speed straight away. The speed I've chosen for my needle to move is just one that I like. Feel free to experiment with a number that suits you. So next up, we're going to have to look at a way to read the speed in from the slider. I'm also going to include a function that allows you to add, add the speed from another function. Because while the slider might be useful as an example, in reality you're probably going to want to send the speed that your car or bullet or whatever it is, is going from another script rather than from a slider on the screen. So for the set speed from slider, all we have to do is read into the slide, read the slider speed dot value into the target speed. Next up, for just a generic set speed function, all you'll need to do is add the amount as a variable that you can send to it, and then assign that variable to the target speed. So next up, I'm actually just going to cut these. I'm going to put them below my update function. I tend to prefer my update function to be one of the first ones that comes up. I'm also going to delete the start function because we're not going to need that. Now that we have a target speed, we're going to want to change the current speed to head towards that target speed. Next up, we're going to write a function to update the speed. Now that we have our target speed, we're going to write a function to update the speed. Now in this function, we're going to need to consider two cases. One, where the current speed is greater than the target speed, and one whether the current speed is less than the target speed. Yeah, it's a bit of a mouthful having both. So let's first of all do the target speed greater than the current speed. So if this is the case, we're going to want to add time.delta time times however fast, which is our needle speed, to the current speed. And then if the current speed finishes exceeding the target speed, that means we've overshot. So we will want to clamp it back and make it equal to the target speed. But you can see from this tool tip, this mathec.clamp that I'm using, you first of all give it the value that you want to a clamp, and then you send the minimum value and the maximum value. And if the speed is outside of that, it'll either put it on the minimum value or the maximum value. So now we're just gonna do the opposite if, which is if the target speed is less than the current speed. This is essentially the same, except that we'll be subtracting time.delta time and having a different set of values for the clamp. If your speedo goes from something different to 0 to 210, you can put those values in. So for example, if your speedo went from 0 to 100, you'd have 0 as your minimum and 100 as your maximum. The last thing we're going to need to do here is we're going to need to set the needle and move it into the correct position. 
I'm going to put this into a separate function. Now to do this is a little bit tricky, but all you need to do is set the Z value correctly on the local or angles and you'll be fine. So here's where it gets a little bit tricky. The first thing you're going to want to do is turn your the amount that your current speed is out of 210 into a decimal. So you just need to grab your current speed and divide it by your highest speed. Next up, I'm going to multiply it by the range and it goes from minus 120 to, two, to 120. So that's a range of 240. And I'm gonna throw this into brackets even though you might not need to, but for me, mathematically, I'm just making sure that I remember that this part of it is done before the next part. I'm going to subtract 120 from this. So the reason I'm subtracting 120 is our range went from, we've multiplied to get a range from 0 to 240, but our range is actually minus 120 to 240. Now the last thing you're going to need to do is multiply this by minus 1 because the needle's going to be going at the moment the opposite direction and multiplying it by minus 1 will get the value going the correct way. We're going to need to do one last thing which is go up to our update function and call our update speed if our target speed isn't equal to our current speed. Now let's save this and go back to Unity and give it a test. I'm going to drop the script onto the needle. I'll drag the needle into the image place. I'll get the slider and put that into the slider place. And we need to do one more thing before we hit play. Just go to our slider. Whenever the value is changed, we want to call that that split speed from slider function. Now let's play and give it a go. And you can see I now get a nice smooth moving of the needle for my target speed. You may prefer to go faster. If that's the case, you can just up the needle speed. You may also prefer just to snap to that point, in which case you don't even need to do the function that we have with the update speed you can simply just forget about your your current speed and just use target speed and if you just use target speed it'll automatically snap so that's how you make a speedo in unity with the ui it's really flexible you could use it with a petrol gauge you could use it really with any gauge that has a needle in it and even if your needle is like a hemisphere it'll still work just make sure that you have a large square and your needle is still in the center if for whatever reason your needle isn't in the center you could just create a game object as the pivot point and then child your needle to that i hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you did please feel free to subscribe like or comment i'll always try and answer any comments or answer any questions people might have about this tutorial.